What's up, everybody? It's me. It's your boy. Hey, what's up, gamers? It's me, Neil. The book of James is a lot of has a lot of similarities to the book of Proverbs. So the book of Proverbs is in the Old Testament. The book of James is in the New Testament, but there's so much wisdom and practical advice. If you are looking for something, I, I always recommend the book of James to anybody who says, where should I just start reading the Bible? I say, start with the book of Luke. After you're done with that, go read James. Here's what James chapter four, verse eight says in the NIV. It says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now, we always read the first part of that scripture because we love it. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Or come near to God, and he'll come near to you. We love that part. But we got to look at it in context, and we really need to read all of verse 4-8. And it says, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You're like, whoa, is that like a backhanded compliment? No. There is something to learn. Remember, we're asking, is there a promise? to claim? Is, is there a sin to avoid? Is there a command to obey? Is there something new about God? And then God, what are you, what are you saying to me here in this? Is there an application that I need to make? So I think that in this one, I think that there is a promise and then maybe a little bit extra there. So we'll, we'll get into that here in just a second. So in context, James, this, this scripture just before it says, Submit, this is verse seven, it says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You can't read verse eight without reading verse seven. So in its, in, in, in the row, it's just, it's literally saying, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Then right after that, it says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Now that is both an invitation from God and a promise. It's both of those things. It is no good, like there's no point in submitting yourselves to God in verse seven and then resisting the devil and seeing him flee from you, but then not drawing near to God after all that. Like it just kind of, it's kind of like, come on, there, it's, it would be no good at all. Now we have it as a promise that God will draw near to us when we draw near to him. It's a promise. Now, when we draw near to God, there's a few different ways you can do that. How, how do you do it? Um, you know, Charles Spurgeon said this. He said that you can draw near in worship, praise, and in prayer, which is great. All three of those are great. You can draw near by asking God for wisdom or for wise counsel. We can also draw near in enjoying communion with God. It's not talking about the actual, you know, act of breaking bread and, and the cup. It's talking about communing, like closeness talking with God. It also means that we can draw near in, in the general course and direction and tenor in your everyday life, in your walk with God, draw near to him. Take a minute wherever you are today, this is the application, and just get close to him. Just take 30 seconds in whatever you're doing before you're walking into a meeting, before you go to that next class, before you walk into your house after a long day at work, just take 30 seconds and get close with God. Just talk to him. And listen, take a minute to listen. I love how this section of scripture is a promise and it's an invitation. And it's not just talking about salvation. Like if you think about it, it doesn't say that draw near to God and he's going to save you. Nope. Although God will and wants to save you. It doesn't say that we need to draw near to God and he'll forgive you. No, nope. even though he will do both of those things. It says draw near to God and he will draw near to you. What does that mean? It means that God wants closeness. He wants relationship. The forgiveness and the salvation and everything else is part of that, but he just wants us to be close. I think it's incredible. So I'm going to pray this scripture over you today, okay? God, we love you a lot. We're thankful for you. We take a minute out of our day. First of all, we submit to you. And we say that, God, you are Lord of all. And we submit to you. We resist the devil. We stand against anything that the devil would throw at us today. We use your word to help guide us. God, we also choose to draw near. And Lord, I pray that in that moment, you would just honor your word and your promise like we know that you will. 
and you draw near to us. We love you a lot. I'm thankful for how close you want to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.